how's it going guys? It's Eclipse here and today we are checking out two fantastic replays that showcase something that usually doesn't happen in World of Tanks, a completely uh, kind of a dumbfounding approach to World of Tanks that I never actually usually comes off quite well and I want to kind of highlight that to you. I'm not going to say that you should be doing anything that I'm doing in these two replays because Nine times out of ten it never works and what you can see me doing here is being very indecisive as to what I want to do on Great Wall because you know those games where 15 year teammates decide that they're all going to go one singular way leaving you potentially on a flank on your own even though maybe the flank is the best place that you should be going in a game mode like Great Wall. The kind of hill area that you can see at H4 and also the hill area at J1 and J2, you know, that's where you primarily should be contesting in a lot of your tanks. However, for some re unbeknownst reason to me, my team decided that that wasn't what they were going to do in this replay. However, me being the fool and being a little bit silly, to be honest with you, decide that I'm actually going to go this area. Now, you'll note that this is actually a tier 8 top tier gameplay in the VK 7501K and this is a fantastic one. One that I was so surprised, genuinely so surprised to be able to come uh, out <laughs> on top at least uh, in one regard. Now you can see that the majority of the enemy team appear as if they're coming this way which is to all intents and purposes terrible for me because if I push down this one flank I'm going to get surrounded, I'm just going to get taken out super quickly. However because of the actual positioning in which I'm at. I'm actually in a pretty strong position in the VK, albeit, you know, if you do get rushed, it would be the end. And this is the sort of scenario which you do want to avoid because in World of Tanks, you should never, if your whole team have decided that they're going to go one way, you should never be the only one going in the opposite direction. And as I spot a AMX uh, French tier 8 heavy premium, the AMX M449. Now, we put one nice shot into him. Of course, the VK has really, really high alpha uh, for its tier. You've got 490 as a heavy, which is always really, really fun. And of course, you can see here that there is an AMX uh, or a VK even that's deciding to shoot us. Now, we don't go for him. We're actually going for the 110 since that is the tank that's going to be uh, progressing towards us pretty quickly. And of course, being a tier 8, it's not the tank that you particularly want to leave uh, alive or at least one that can shoot you now then because we've got nothing else to shoot at might as well get the VK now we bouncing just continuously off of this guy although the 110 manages to pen us probably through the lower plate we're still kind of waiting for him now he is going to overexpose himself here and we place a nice round into the unangled front uh, or front upper plate of the 110 which means uh, we can pen him and this is just the scenario in which you want to be in when you're playing in your kind of heavily armoured tanks where people are just YOLOing shots into you not really paying attention or even trying to go for the uh, correct areas. Now the EBR Hotchkiss decides that apparently he's going to come round and save the day and fortunately for him he just completely doesn't and we're still being like perma-tracked by this VK who decides he's just going to continuously come round. I get a little bit fed up of him and we're just going to take him out even though I shouldn't really be focusing the tier 6 because he's the least of my problems. This 110 is far more kind of annoying to come up against and you can see that already we've managed to take out what three tanks on this flank all by myself and this is something that just you never expect to happen in World of Tanks. It's kind of lucky that the AMX M449 was actually AFK within this replay or at least what seems to be unless he's being a complete bot or maybe he is a bot, I don't know. But we're going to progress towards the 110. We have far more alpha than he has hit points left so we'd have to get super unlucky if we weren't able to actually pen him here. Now it doesn't really matter because we're so close quarters and we're able to come down, look down onto him and unfortunately can't get the upper plate but we can actually get the top of his turret and now we're left with being able to shoot the AMX M449 after mopping up pretty much everyone on this flank picking up four kills and just being a nuisance to the enemy team of course they didn't know what even hit him to be honest with you and having gone for the track of the HMH we are kind of making sure that we'll get any of the assistance damage that we're potentially going for you can see me aiming once again into the side of him we don't manage to actually finish him off because it appears as though our tank destroyer is probably going to do that for them and yeah he does and of course 
we picked up a fantastic round of World of Tanks in a scenario which I genuinely thought I was never going to come away with. You should not be going on a flank all on your own and definitely shouldn't be surviving it having encountered five or even six enemy tanks all in one kind of trail. <laughs> definitely is not something that should happen. But there we go. It has, and of course, we have a fantastic round in the VK7501K, picking up 4,437 damage and, of course, blocking 3.4 thousand as well, which typically doesn't happen in World of Tanks, but it did in this one, and, of course, we get the victory for that. Um, in terms of the actual statistics that we managed to pick up, well, you'll see those in just a second. But one thing that I want to highlight is that although this game went su sufficiently well, you definitely should be thinking in tanks like this to definitely have a little bit of support. Even if there's like one or two other tanks with you, then you can make a little bit of a stand. But going all alone typically doesn't usually work out. Now, we do pick up a decent amount of silver since the German operation that's going on right now. And we managed to pick up 285,000 silver in a tier 8 premium, which is fantastic. And of course, let's jump into the next replay. The next replay I have to showcase to you guys is playing in a tank that I genuinely hated for the longest amount of time. And this is the tier 6 when I bought it premium tier 6 light tank from the French line. And then it got buffed slash not really buffed, but kind of pushed up to tier 7 at which it currently presides. It had about 640 hit points off the top of my brain which meant that you still had tier 6, six hit points but you were playing against guaranteed tier 7s and it meant that this tank as a kind of light tank that is supposed to be good was just not at all and in this replay we're going to see it what happens when you're coming to a tier 9 gameplay in a tank that it's probably the weakest when it is, of course, at bottom tier, and it gets sufficiently weaker. Obviously, most tanks, when you go like up the tiers and you're playing against higher tiered opponents when you're in the minus two, should be pretty much worse than the other tanks. However, this one is especially so because you can get two shot by literally everything in the game. You've also got um, a fairly poor mobility, although that did get buffed recently, which made this tank just a little bit better or easier to play. Uh, still not easy, though. I don't think this is particularly one that um, new players should ever really be getting. It is a console-exclusive tank, I believe, off the top of my head. Someone can definitely fact-check me and make sure that that is correct, but I believe it's not actually on PC or Blitz, uh, and this is a kind of exclusive. It is essentially a chaffy that's got the AMX, 1375 turret um, and of course it's playing at tier 7 now in terms of why this tank is important for those of you that are interested in actually picking this tank up potentially as a premium tank then it is a dual crew trainer so you can put in american or you can put in um, your french crews into this thing for free it obviously doesn't really matter at this point because there are so many crews on the game anyway and i'm sure that you have plenty of crews for both so you don't really need it to train up your crews and because it's a tier 7 you're probably not going to be able to train up your crews that fast you'd be probably better to just play a tier 8 and just go that route or alternatively use the ton of xp boosters uh, commander xp boosters uh, that you have already in the game maybe you could use them with this tank but i wouldn't really recommend it uh, as kind of a method to train up your crews but what you can see in this replay is how a tier 7 light tank that is supposedly terrible or at least one of the weaker ones i'm not saying that anymore this is terrible or weak because it did get buffed and there is significant advantages to playing this tank now however i feel like for the most part it can be a little bit tedious to play albeit because you have a six shot autoloader with 150 damage per shell i believe it means that you've got about um well uh, 900 alpha that you can dish out all in one clip should you be able to dish it out all in one clip because the penetration of your standard rounds is as a tier 7 would expect pretty awful so when you're coming up against tier 9 heavies or anything like that then you can be a little bit of a disadvantage we can plow rounds into things like the su 130pm because that tank it's just not got what you need and unfortunately for the SU uh, we can pen him every single time. Now there's a trailblazer here, The obviously the kind of opposite number of the light tank of course at tier 8 however and gets a much better autoloader with like 240 alpha damage per shot as opposed to the 135 that I believe this might actually be instead of the 150 so even worse than I thought but 
Never the, nevertheless, this tank can definitely dish out damage all in one go onto opponents that you um, kind of have to be very mindful as to who you're picking the fight against because if, for example, you're playing against the Conqueror in the Amex Chaffee, that tank can two-shot you. So trying to play against it, be aggressive against it, it can be definitely one of the worst things that you do because you can get taken out so quick. However, if you play this tank so passively, it kind of doesn't work either. So what you need to do is be a little bit of a rat where you're kind of coming in being very opportunistic and hence why I think um, kind of players that are a bit more experienced will do much better in this thing uh, comparatively. And although we do take two shots within this game it leaves us on a one shot for pretty much every tank in the game now and that is uh, definitely something that you don't want now we have picked up a, a decent chunk of damage we've almost got a double fire for effect having dealt 1600 damage you've also got 859 uh, assistance damage as well so we're over two and a half thousand combined damage however the game is not ending and we can definitely be of assistance to our team albeit uh, we are a fairly slow tank and we're trying to actually move out of the way this Sturm Tiger, but he decides he's just going to continue, hence why we fire at him. You know, could have just helped by just stopping there rather than trying to just push forward. But there we go. You know, you can't help it. But there we go. Having done this amount of damage and also noting that the enemy team are in the cap circle, we need to get back. Well, I'm not losing to cap. I've lost so many times to cap circles. And because we're in the light tank, we actually have the mobility to be able to get back and reset. Albeit, this is a tier 9 game, we don't know what's in the cap, I haven't actually checked within the game to know what is actually in that cap circle, so there are two tanks, it's probably the light tank that we saw earlier, the trailblazer, and it's also probably some, one of, well, one of the medium tank, the tank destroyer, or the heavy tank, it could be the artillery, but I very much doubt it, but nonetheless, we're going to go for the SU-130PM, get him out of the game, now we could have well maybe should have actually gone for the trailblazer but that doesn't matter because we can put the damage into the SU and because we're fairly weighty and that the trailblazer is now completely out of rounds having fired at the medium tank you know how it is we can just ram in we're definitely heavier than that tank since we are uh, a bit more like a medium tank kind of uh, hull armor at tier 7 you know we're definitely not the size of a medium tank if you were playing up against tier 9s but you know the spic is made of just i don't even know cardboard um, and this thing is made of a little bit more of a solid kind of structure so it allows us to actually take him out with a ram um, don't go ramming things in this thing it won't work 90 percent of the time we just got lucky now we have picked up two and a half thousand damage we've also managed to pick up 859 assistance and having fired a lot of premium rounds because that's just literally what you have to do in the amx chaffee if you want to be able to reliably pen and i see comments in some of the videos that are like why why do you have premium rounds in your tank there's no reason <laughs> there's the that's the reason why you have good games etc well no the reason i'm having good games is because i've chosen to fire the actual decent round for the target that i'm firing at it's different if you're just loading full premium and everything that you're firing against is premium rounds but in something like the amx chaffee where you're coming up against tier 10 heavies firing them is definitely something that's worth it it's a premium that's going to make your silver back so it's actually better to deal more damage have a better result survive longer and perform better in the game which then actually gives you more silver in the first place which means that you make more silver by actually firing premium rounds that cost you silver people just don't understand that and they'd rather do 400 damage as opposed to the 2000 that you could have done if you loaded some premium rounds um, and that is why i think a lot of people get caught up in this trap where they don't have enough silver so they don't fire or use any consumables or anything like that and then they end up doing worse because of course they're not using any of them then it takes them 10 years to actually get better at the game because you could have made it so much easier on yourself to be able to actually load the premium rounds like everyone else does and because it's actually worth doing uh, and therefore you would have got better however in this game we of course have to be very careful a tier 7 light tank against a i believe a leopard pta uh, the tier 9 um, german medium um, could definitely go in the wrong favor as we lag tremendously there um, however in this replay we've picked up 2969 damage in a tier 7 light tank pretty much carrying the game saving us from being capped out at the end of the game 
Um, and of course, there is a CS44, not the uh, Leopard PTA that I thought there was. But we're probably not going to be able to get there. But I want to kind of end up this video by saying that, yeah, there are definitely moments in World of Tanks which you feel like would be terrible. But sometimes it is actually worth doing them to have fun. But note that, yeah, if you're having terrible games and you're trying to work out why, then maybe not doing the things that we've showcased in this video probably would help you out. Of course, the first one being not going down a flank on your own and the second one being not trying to take on an opponent that is uh, kind of two tiers higher than you and of course having way more alpha damage and the potential to take you out far quicker than you will them. So picking your targets is far more important in uh, kind of playing the AMX Shaffy. Don't go for the uh, full health tank when you could go for the lower health tank and take them out like the Spick would have been able to or the Tiger Shark as it's kind of the premium version is known. But there we go, really good game in both the first and second replay. Of course, if you like this type of video where we're kind of showcasing some tips whilst also giving you some good gameplay, then leave a comment because I want to find out what you guys want to watch in this next upcoming videos that we'll have on this channel. But other than that, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. And of course, if you want to check out the new premium tank in Cold War, then check out the left hand side which showcases that and of course on the right hand side I'll leave a link to the update news about the this week's news in World of Tanks console and thank you very much for watching goodbye